Hello everyone and welcome back to a, another episode of Elegy for a Dead World. I just want to give a small update on this series. I'm going to be turning this into a story time sort of game mode because there's not a lot I can actually do anymore in the game I found out. So all I can do is look at the other stories that other people have written. So I'm going to change the name of the series to instead of a let's play to a story time elegy for a dead world and we're gonna browse different people's stories and stuff like that which I think will be quite nice so let's move up here first of all let's, let's start reading some really let's do a recent one um, Celsius. Hmm. We were looking for a title that really, really shouts out at us. Yeah, let's have a read of this one, The Ultimate Martyr. So we got The Ultimate Martyr by Pontif, I think that is. They say everything comes to an end. Here in the sand, their first colony lays wasted. Its ruins rise up out of the sand like colossal metal skeletons. The sun beats down upon the desert, baking it in a hot aura of silence and desolation. The hum of ancient machines still continues, shrouding the landscape in a mechanical chorus. Soon we begin our descent into the mausoleum of the Forgotten. The settlers of Byron's world formed their settlement far below ground, initially because of the lack of ability to adapt to the surface world. They opted to not change their ways, but to change their landscape instead. Such is the way of life. It's ironic, as the creatures that claim to have such higher intelligence are usually the ones who fall for the simplest conundrums. They sacrifice the ability to see the sun for the ability to see the darkness. They saw the darkness of the cold, wet caves, but not the darkness of their hearts. They brought things from Earth that reflected their values. They were people who adored the foreign gold and exotic things of alien planets, but never actually went to the planets themselves. Their obsessions ruled their lives instead of themselves. They got lost in the materialistic, consumerist way of life. They never saw the value of life. It is no matter now, as they are no longer. A lesson to be learned, a lecture to be heeded. This story is really rich in its writing, and I really, really am enjoying this so far. This is all that is left of the first settlement of Byron's world. Their biggest mistake? Failure to see past their desire for materials and wealth. Their houses and buildings stand as solemn monoliths, serving as a grim reminder to anyone who sees them. Were they allowed to leave one last voice behind in this realm, in this realm of the living? That is a question that neither I nor they know. Sorry, I lost track. <laughs> Perhaps that through death they can redeem themselves. The ultimate martyr. Maybe there is beauty in that. I took a last glimpse of the settlement before I continued on. The humming did not stop. The sun continued on. The building stayed. Yet these people no longer remain. Time has claimed their bodies, but I refuse to let it claim their spirits. Moving closer to the surface, they started a new, a new society with morals, justice, and a dedication to liberty. They saw themselves as a form of democratic crusader. They saw the darkness there with. I just want to make sure I don't get any copyright like I did in the 
last video for one small short clip I got copyrighted so it was a bit of a pain um, no matter <clears throat> I'll start again moving closer to the surface they started anew a new society with morals justice and a dedication to liberty they saw themselves as a form of democratic crusader they saw the darkness of the rock as an oppressive regime. They wanted to continue on and become enlightened. They saw de democracy as the undisputed ultimate form of government. They began worshipping the equality itself as some form of symbolic god. Little did they know this would spark the fire to their downfall. The fanaticism of liberty and obsession of equality reflect this new generation. If one, val in, uh, if one individual were to ever so slightly, to be ever m so slightly more important than the other, they were ripped down and sorted socially. Everything they worked for, everything they were given, gone. Nobles and kings of antiquity were <laughs> regicided, and those of wealth were stripped of all they know. They rejected spiritual beliefs and saw any indifference as a problem. If one were to be grey, they'd almost be grey. A shame they forsaken their own history for progress. A progression of their idiocy. If you listen closely here, you can hear the screams of the innocent souls. They say it's where the souls of the rich and the nobility are tormented. They claimed that these types of citizens cause more problems, more calamities and more destruction than anyone else. They saw them as horrible impunities. They claimed that if everyone had a voice, then everyone would be happy. To trust in the uneducated populace is to let corrupt and disgusting plutocrats take control. I'd rather have a king any day than to let my life be ruled by money. The third settlement began as a form of resistance, of rebellion, built to oppose the fanatic individualism of the previous one. They continued onward toward the surface, leaving the mistakes of the past behind them, trapped in the cold, dark and forgotten caves of the ground. They were now ruled by a king. Their equalist has caused more death and destruction than most of the previous kings. However, the third settlement is important. Here a rebirth of the arts, of the sciences. Their king encouraged this, and all walks of life flourished. Maybe they were doing things right for once. That opposition, more evident here, where they opposed rampant republicanism as fervently as possible. If a king or a noble had no heir that was either interested or eligible for their succession, then they created their perfect heir. Selective cloning was here. They grew the perfect nobles. The cloning facilities were highly prized and were kept secret from the populace. The kings and nobles had technology far beyond what archaeologists originally thought. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. I must be going on. But everything comes to an end. Their kings were no more. Excessive cloning had deteriorated the health of the heirs, and all of those whose gene samples were collected. Everything had come to an end when the populace had finally caught up to the government in technology. It was a velvet revolution. No blood, no death, just resignation. The people pleaded for a council, and that the kings and nobles would step down from power. The royalty and nobility agreed and they were given special rights as private citizens. The people governed themselves again, but the rebirth of the arts had come to an end. The fourth settlement must have mastered faster than light travel because they achieved the ability to live on the surface world. Little is known about the fourth world, but as a traveler and as a scholar, I will bring to light anything I find. This snowman was a stark contrast to the surrounding non-natural structures. With a dark sun in the distance, this landscape could be described as a frozen hell. 
The Bullens looked war-torn. Perhaps invaders from space? Unlikely. These buildings look like they have been damaged from primitive explosive ballistas. Perhaps some kind of civil war. Either way, the snowman looks far younger than the buildings. Therefore, it must have been built during or after the collapse of the buildings. They are sentient creatures too, and I'll assume that a child built this. Even in times of war and strife, the innocence and emotional, emotional tendencies of a child can do wonders on the soul. Onward. But everything must come to an end. But must everything come to an end? Sorry. A device used for possible uh, for possible space travel. It looks like some sort of cannon. I wouldn't doubt that if this black sun had anything to do with the cataclysmic events that occurred here, then an exodus of the stars that is not. Sorry. I wouldn't doubt that if this black sun had anything to do with the cataclysmic events that occurred here. Then an exodus to the stars is not an unusual answer. Perhaps the sun is an enemy or an ally. Either way, the scarce amount of artifacts here for me to analyse is quite irritating. They leave me with more questions and little answers. Hopefully these answers come to me soon. I looked at the device a bit more. And I was correct. When activated, it would serve as a form of launching station for some kind of primitive, long-term space shuttle. However, there is something very, very odd. This platform lines up directly with the black sun and angled towards it too. Were they trying to go to the black sun? If so, then this is extremely interesting. Perhaps answers lie there in the darkness. Then, what is the point of these settlers trying to escape the darkness when the answers were there all along? Finally, at the end of it all, they leave me no answers. Were they exterminated? Did they go to the Black Sun? Are there other settlements around? I do not know, and I may never know. Like I said, when I was leaving the first settlement, these people deserve one last attempt at redeeming themselves. They redeemed themselves by leaving lessons for all to study. Lessons of life, lessons on how to act and how not to act. Maybe they found redemption in their new paradise, I will not know. However, they succeeded in one thing, becoming the ultimate martyr. Oh, yes. I loved that story. I loved that story. Honestly, that was one of the best stories I've read. Probably the most interactive and interesting story ever. It brings a new perspective to the whole what happened to these people as well. I think we're going to read another story down here. Let's go back to the desert world. See what we can find in the recent. Oh, oh, interesting. I like it. I'll read it. So this time we've got a book, an interesting book so far that's called E. This is for you. Written, written by... Frozen Scarecrow. Let's get into this. You'd like it here, E. There are worse places that I can get lost. It's kind of peaceful, quiet. It's just a bit of that rain that reminds you of a warm summer day. Of warm summer days, getting caught without an umbrella. I hope that I can tell you about it someday. Just as I point out, a day with two A's. However, this could be a completely different alien this could be like an alien language so their day could be spelt with two a's and we'd have no idea you'd like the grass it's pink and purple not green like back home not like it used to be anyway you'd love seeing the sculpture there's only one that i can see now but it's right in front of me and it's massive do you know the story of alice from greek mythology 
is the story of the punishment of a titan. He was forced to hold the whole world on his shoulders. I think I know that feeling. They did send me out here after all. Anyway, this statue is just like that, but with three of them. I guess our gods were cooler. We only needed one to hold our planet. Or maybe this planet is bigger than Earth. That could be good, I suppose. I don't think it has affected the gravity at all, though. I feel fine, but unlike our, out our Atlas, these guys are devoid of features. Like, they're not even people. I wonder if they reflect the original carvers, or if they don't matter enough to be known. I think I know that feeling, too. Okay, whoa. That's a lot of information from this one story, this one page, sorry. So, the green grass back home, we can assume they're from Earth, but we're assuming that the person is following Greek mythology because they refer to unlike our atlas towards the end of the paragraph. So maybe these are the followers of Greek mythology. I must say though, the punishment for Atlas was... He got punished for bringing, if I remember correctly, by bringing, for bringing fire to the humans. Because he brought fire to the humans and taught them how to create fire, Zeus forced him, Zeus uh, forced um, Atlas to hold up the heavens. Um, so, I don't feel like that's fair, but I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct. Let's continue. Oh, page three is the same. Okay, there we go. Picture Kansas. Or oh, really anywhere in those flyover states, as the city types of New York or California call them. Not like they've ever seen where we grew up, right? Well, beaches are those plains, rolling and extending in all directions. You can imagine the weed and grass, right? The seas of gold that is some image of Americana. This place is like that, just in vibrant neon colors like a rave. It's not that different from home. Underground? I can't believe it. I'm, I mean, I'm used to your typical landscapes, right? It's solid underfoot, but here it's hollow, far as the eye can see. But the crust is cushioned only on air and could collapse at any moment. It's pretty, actually. If you can get past the, the fear of being squashed, uh, like a world within the world, and despite the dark, I still see just as vibrant. Uh, I just see. I still see vibrant colors. I had to change the ending there because it didn't really make any sense. I still see just as vibrant of colours. I mean, it could make some sense, but not to me. I see so much darkness. It makes me wonder what's down there. Or down here, sorry. Like where the people, uh, were there people that lived here? Was it maybe for some kind of agriculture? If there are giant spiders down here, I'm noping the hell off of this planet. You know my problems with those things, and I hear such quietness. Like, above I could hear the wind and the rain, but now there's a general harm of, like maybe a giant machine. But it's the kind of white noise that lulls you to sleep, rather than something that rattles your insides awake. It's easier to imagine us living here than in the big cities. God, I hate that life. The traffic, the people, the noise. It's all such a drag. I know, that's where work is. But in this day and age, we could work remotely. Go wherever we wanted. Meet new people every day. Explore new places. Think of the adventure. Or at least the break from monotony. I would, mm, I would argue that from coming from a village like me, living in a 
a town, not a city, a town is more preferable. I think as I grew up, I'd want to live in a village, but my, yeah, my childhood was quite boring. There wasn't a lot to do outside. There weren't a lot of friends because it was mainly people who had kids ended up being far further away or stuff like that. And yeah, I would rather live in a town, especially if I'm going to start a family or something like that. <laughs> oh, is that snow? Remember snow? I loved when the cold, the snow outside, Christmas just around the corner. That was life for me. Just something amazing to look forward to. There's another reason why life is better outside the city. Snow in the city means to be dry and slush into snow, slush in your shoes. But uh, beyond that, it's all just a beautiful blanket of white. Space where it presses water and artificial air. I don't get to see snow anymore. So these people live in space and have traveled down to, I guess, gather a sample or something. This world was made for people like you and me. Do you want to live to the city? Those who want to see every little bit that a piece that a place has to offer. To appreciate every secret we come across. I mean, imagine a world. Maybe bigger than Earth, with the second slightly smaller version of today. Both of them have happened to be and able to be explored. We would never want for something to see and never not. We would never want. Yeah, yeah, we would never want for something to see and never not have a nostalgic glow to return to somewhere. Just as when we first really started to get to know each other. I think I'm in the wrong mindset for this place. I know what I'm after here. Oh, I know that after I'm here. I, I apologize for all the mess mistakes in my wording, by the way, guys. <laughs> I know that after I'm here, I'll need to go and see somewhere new. It's part of the job, but places like this... Still they get to me. Remember that nostalgic long I mentioned? Yeah. Me getting all sentimental like this isn't going to help with that. But like I said, it's like when we first really met. Look how it turned out. What we mean f to each other. Or men, at least. If these places become as amazing as you are to me, then I think I can be happy. But I'm sorry, I won't bring that up again. Hell, I don't even know when you're gonna get these. I hope it reaches you somehow, like I remember you. And that I'm still the man you remember me to be. I guess I won't know for sure until we meet again. However, the circumstances bring that to n- Ooh. To n- Ooh, it cut out. Ooh. I'm sorry we'll never lay in the pink grass together, feeling the warm rain on our skin. I won't feel your fair... I won't feel your hair on my face, and know you're leaning over me. There's so much that we will never do, and it hurts, just a little. For all the good we had, I wish there was, a, there was more great to come, but there isn't. This may never reach you. You couldn't read it. It, anyway, uh, this may never tell you the things that are truly in my heart. I don't know them either, if I'm to be honest, so I can't be certain. Like I said, there are a lot of nervous that stretch before us. Me? You'd like it here. And I would like it here more with you. Oof. Wow, okay. Wow, so this is about a couple. Um, male, female, 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 I, I can't tell. Um, ooh, but that was really strong and emotional. Bar the spelling mistakes. 
and grammar mistakes. That was a really strong story. Um, emotionally, that's that's really hit me, um, and I don't really know why. I mean, I guess it's the wording, but I'm gonna give that a comment a commendation. Um, Because it really does deserve it. We're going to end story time here. We're going to go back to the portal. We're going to end story time here. So this has been story time. Do, 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 do. I don't know what that was. Please. Please don't ask me what that was. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway. I will see you guys in the next episode of story time. Bye bye for now. Bye.